guys, it's Bryn. Welcome back. I feel like every time I film in this room, it looks a little bit different back here. Um, I did recently do a vlog where I went and kind of shopped for home decor and showed you guys where I got all this stuff. So I will link it somewhere around. Uh, so you can watch that if you're curious where all this background stuff is from. But anyway, that's not why we're here today. If you've been watching me for a while or maybe not even that long, you probably know <laughs> that I am constantly reading books. Um, it's just something that I enjoy. I think I talk about this every time I make one of these videos. I like to read all sorts of different things um, just all the time. I always have a book close by. As I get older I feel like it gets harder and harder to find the time to just like sit down and read because there's always other things I could be doing. <laughs> but at the same time not being in school makes it easier to just like read whatever I want to read and I don't have to do what other people want me to do. <laughs> so I do talk about in vlogs a lot just what I'm reading at the time, whether I like it, whether I don't. I also put it up on my blog. I put like a monthly entertainment roundup kind of thing where I tell you about what I've watched, what I've read that month, um, things like that. But I do just like to do kind of a catch up on here every few months of just like what I've been reading, um, what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy, and kind of give you some book recommendations just because these are things that I love to talk about and what I would talk to my friends about. So it seems like a perfect thing to make a video about, doesn't it? <laughs> Even though I know this isn't everyone's cup of tea, um, I know not everyone likes the same books, but I do try to read as widely as I can or as widely as I feel like. I do mostly stick to like young adult fiction, but I do read regular adult fiction. I do read nonfiction books. I dabble in like the sci-fi fantasy series every so often. So I do try and like branch out and read a bunch of different things just because I like to do that. So I feel like there is a little something for everybody in what I read. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you have a very specific taste, in which case, let me know. I, I would love to have your recommendations. Um, I'm always looking for new things to read. So I have five books to share with you today <laughs> and they're all very heavy. So I'm gonna put them down now. <laughs> I feel like in the past few months, I did kind of slow down a little bit, which I'll go into one of these books kind of slowed me down a little bit, but oh well, let's talk about them. So the first book is Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. It is the third book in the Illuminate Files trilogy and like can we just talk about how cool this cover is. And if I take up the plastic part it's just like a really cool looking book all around. Can we agree? <laughs> so again this is the third and final book in the Illuminate Files trilogy which is essentially a series of books about spaceships and artificial intelligence and kids fighting to save their home planet. <laughs> but don't let that fool you because it's better than it sounds. So to avoid spoilers and confusion, um, I'll use this as an opportunity to tell you about kind of the series as a whole rather than just the last one. So if you can't tell by looking at it, um, this is not your typical book. I've honestly never read other books like these. Um, it's not told as a typical story. It's told through case files, um, security video transcripts, emails, text conversations. But what's amazing about it is you still get the full range of story and characters. It's honestly just kind of amazing how they manage with this format to give you the full range of a story and it's worth reading for that alone even if this isn't your typical book that you would pick up. But in terms of the story throughout the trilogy, it wasn't perfect. It did get confusing and kind of convoluted at times. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff that you're not or you're intentionally not supposed to understand. There's just a lot going on and it makes it difficult to read at times, but because of the format and because of like the underlying tone of the story, I just it was really really good. Even when it got confusing, even when I wasn't sure what the hell was going on, I still kept wanting to read it. I wanted to figure out what was going to happen. And the story as a whole is just a good reminder of like the idea that regardless of your age, your voice is important. And you can be a catalyst for change even if no one wants to see or believe it. And this book just has amazing characters that just show that and I really, really liked these. So next book I have is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicole Yoon, who also wrote Everything Everything, which I believe, did I talk about that in another video? Maybe not. I feel like I've talked about it before. So essentially, this is a story about a boy, a girl, 
isn't it always, but they have completely different lives, um, completely different worldviews, but they kind of come together for one very strange and important day in both of their lives. Overall, this was a super cute book. I think I read it in an afternoon, and it was a good way to spend an afternoon. Like, again, I love these like quick books that you can just tear through in a few hours. I smiled a lot while reading this book. It put me in such a good mood. So I've had this book for a while. Um, I picked it up because I really enjoyed her other book, Everything Everything, and if I'm honest, this one didn't quite live up to that one. I liked that other one more. I mean, I still enjoyed this one, but it felt a little less maybe like substantive to me. I don't know if that's the right word, but regardless, it just wasn't quite as good personally. <laughs> this book is a great testament to how one thing, whether it's a day or a person, can just change how you live the rest of your life and how it can kind of ensure that you're never the same person again, which I kind of love. And it kind of serves as like a magical moment in time because it all takes place over the course of like one day. But what worked for it in that sense also kind of worked against it. Because of the short time span of this book, it had a really quick pace that kind of made it unbelievable, which is kind of my gripe with most like YA romance books like this, which leads me to my next book. <laughs> this is Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertelli, which I, again, I picked up because I read her other book, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, which I know I've talked about on here <laughs> because I really loved that book. So if you've read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, this serves kind of as a sequel. It picks up a little after the other story left off, but from the point of view of a different character. So Simon was about him coming out as gay, figuring his life out, and this is about his best friend Leah as she's coming out as bisexual and trying to understand her feelings for one of her friends, growing up, etc, etc. And overall, this book, it just didn't amaze me. Like, I'll be honest, I read books like this just, again, for like a fun afternoon of just something happy and upbeat. and. I don't expect to get a lot out of it, like my expectations are low for books like this, but this book is part just like an unrealistic romance that felt more like fan fiction than anything to me. But the other part was a really fun main character who whose head was really interesting to get into. She was quirky, confident, um, full of pop culture references, which I love, um, self-deprecating in the best way. And even though the Leah in this book didn't really match up with Leah's character from Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, I can look past that and take this book, like, for what it is, which was, one, it was fun, it was enjoyable for an afternoon, made me smile. Two, it's important, I think, for the future of representation in books as a whole. But three, ultimately not a standout for me. The next book, a little bit of a curveball. Um, this is The Man Who Couldn't Stop, OCD in the True Story of a Life Lost in Thought by David Adam. And I don't read a lot of nonfiction books, not because I don't like them, but because they take me forever to read. <laughs> and I don't know why, because I love reading them. And this one was no exception. Like I wanted to read this so badly, but it took me forever to get through. <laughs> and it's not because it was bad. I think it's just because nonfiction books have tons of information that I just want to understand and take in and it just takes a lot of time. I don't know, I can only read like 10 pages at night before I'm like, okay, <laughs> I've absorbed enough information and I'm ready for bed. So I originally picked up this book because I believe John Green mentioned it in his acknowledgments for his book Turtles All the Way Down, which if you haven't seen it, I have an entire book review video on that book. It's one of my favorite videos I've ever done, so Feel free to check that out, I would love it if you did. And because that book was about a character with OCD, I was curious to learn more about it and oh my god, will this dog not shut up? I love you dog, but like, relax. But anyway, I was curious to learn more about OCD and I didn't expect a lot out of this book other than just a bunch of like information and like fact dumping. <laughs> but actually, this book did not read like that at all. I mean, yeah, it got very scientific at times, I won't lie. What can you expect? Um, but it was interspersed with stories about the author, stories about other people with OCD, that it made it easy and interesting to read and enjoy. And honestly, like, if more nonfiction books read like this one, I'd probably pick them up more often. I feel like more people would pick them up more often because it was just so much more engaging than regular nonfiction books, in my experience. Because I didn't finish this book just with a better understanding of OCD but with a better understanding of mental health as a whole and just like how 
we understand our own thoughts and what our relationship is with our own thoughts, which I wish was something we all just took more time to understand. And I wish we weren't so scared of it, which is something I think I've definitely taken away from reading this book, is to not be so afraid of our thoughts, even if we feel like at most times we can't control them. We don't have to be afraid of that. All right, and the last book I am so excited to tell you about. I don't even remember how I found this, but I feel like I found a gem and I cannot wait to tell you about it. So this is called Everything All at Once by Katrina Leno. Leno? Leno? And it's essentially about a girl whose aunt passes away and leaves her this series of letters to get her out of her comfort zone and help her kind of deal with her anxiety after her passing. And because the main character has anxiety is the main reason why I picked this up. What I didn't know is that her anxiety would be so similar to mine that it's actually kind of scary. <laughs> and let me just tell you, um, this book exceeded my every expectation. If only because it's so perfectly encapsulated, like my experience living with anxiety, while also just being like completely charming, completely honest, and just like nothing I've read before. And I don't want to hype it up too much because in reality, like this book is simple. It's not a blow your mind story or filled with characters that you just like instantly fall in love with and can't stop freaking out about. <laughs> and like, yeah, there were some little things throughout that I maybe didn't love, but this book, it just, it is what it is. And it has a point and it doesn't stray from it. And it doesn't try to like distract you or overwhelm you with emotion. Like it's just a down to earth, simple story that resonated with me and I just love it. And even when it does go a little out of the box, I, I feel like it stays true to its theme and to its character. And it didn't need like hot and heavy romance or quirky characters or infinite pop culture references to like keep my attention. It just, it was what it was and I loved it for that. It was real, it was honest, and honestly it's just like, it's one of the best books, if not the best book that I've read so far this year. I, I love it so much and I can't believe like that I just picked this book up randomly out of nowhere, I think on Amazon. I love it so much. <laughs> it's just crazy. So if you're just into like simple, thematic, down-to-earth books like I am that don't need insane plot or anything, just are what they are and just are great for it, <laughs> I don't have another way to explain it. I feel like I found a gem here and I just have to tell the world about it because I love it so much. And all right guys, that is all the books that I planned to tell you about today. That felt really quick. Did that feel quick to you? I guess it was only five books, but. And I'll mention, as I always do at the end of these, um, I do have a Goodreads account that you can follow me on. Um, I think probably just type in my name and you'll find it. I have no clue like what my username is on there, if I have one. I don't know, maybe I'll link it below. So yeah, I'll do that. I'll link it below so you can find it. And again, if you haven't yet checked out my blog, um, that's also linked below. I keep track of everything that I listen to, watch, read, enjoy, whatever over the course of a month. And I post all that on my blog, which I will also link below. So make sure to check that out. Um, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some good book recommendations. Um, please leave me yours in the comments. I would love to know. I will see you very soon with another video. Bye guys.